The COVID situation around the world is very fluid and it is changing very quickly. So we are updating our border control measures based on our latest assessment. Uh, we know that some places have been able to control the infection effectively and the risk of importation uh, is low. Our assessment is that there is no need for a stay-home notice requirement for travellers from these low-risk places and a COVID-19 test will be sufficient. So we will start cautiously and lift the travel restriction for visitors from two countries, namely Brunei and New Zealand. In other words, for travellers who have been in Brunei and New Zealand in the last 14 days prior to entry, when they arrive in Singapore, they will undergo a test at the airport and there is no need to serve a stay-home notice. There are other low-risk places where the stay-home notice may not be required, but out of an abundance of caution, we will keep the SHN for now. But we will shorten the SHN to seven days and we will allow the SHN to be served at the place of residence. And these places are Australia, excluding Victoria, Macau, mainland China, Taiwan, Vietnam and Malaysia. For Incoming travellers from all other places, the usual 14-day stay-home notice at dedicated facilities will apply. And regardless of the duration of SHN, whether you are on a 7-day or 14-day regime, we will continue to administer a COVID-19 test towards the end of the stay-home notice. So this applies to all incoming travellers. In other words, we will have a framework in place uh, for three categories, or, or for, for namely one, uh, two countries where travellers coming in will not be subject to a SHN and will uh, have to undergo a test at the airport. Second, from a few countries which I've highlighted where they will serve a shorter seven-day SHN and do so at home. And thirdly, for travellers coming in from all other places, the usual 14-day SHN at a dedicated facility will apply. Of course, the countries in the different categories will continue to be updated over time. So this is not cast in stone. We continue to assess the situation and we will update the list of countries over time. For outbound travellers, we will also update our advisory current situation up to now has been to defer all travel abroad. In line with the updates to our border control measures, we will now allow general travel to Brunei and New Zealand. We will also allow travel for students who are studying overseas. And that's because many foreign education institutions are resuming their terms quite soon, and we know that there are students based in Singapore who are full-time students and who have to go back to school in these various institutions. By updating the travel advisory, it would mean that these students, when they travel, or, whoever, or travelers who are going to Brunei and New Zealand, in compliance with the updated travel advisory, will be eligible for government subsidies and insurance coverage for treatment um, when they return if they end up being infected with COVID-19 because they are traveling in compliance with the updated travel advisory. But such travelers will still be subject to prevailing border measures, including the payment of their stay at dedicated SHN facilities and any tests that have to be administered if and when applicable. So all of these changes to our uh, travel measures for both incoming as well as outgoing uh, will take effect on 1st September.